In a democracy, the process of choosing something or someone is of paramount importance and why it shouldn't be. After all, the power to choose gives people the power to change. Change which is responsible for human development. Change which is inevitable. This change can be slow or fast. It really depends on the environment. To ensure the process of choosing and changing, the constitution has given us plenty of rights. Though sometimes what we choose may not be pleasant. But still, the process to change may relax us a bit. However, there are some exceptions to those rights. This is one such case. The question is answerable in only one line. People choose their representatives and those representatives choose the president. Howbeit, the process is a bit tedious or somewhat interesting. Article 54 of the constitution says, the president can only be elected by the electoral college, meaning the member of both the houses of the parliament, that is Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, and the members of the legislative assemblies of each state and union territories. Going forward, we will abbreviate union territories as UTs. India has 28 states and 8 UTs. Out of the 8 UTs, 2 of them have their own legislative assemblies, which are National Capital of Delhi and Puducherry. Rest of the UTs are governed by the President, who has the power to appoint either a Governor or an Administrator acting as representative of the President. But in reality, we know who governs the UTs. Out of the 28 states, only 6 states have a bicameral legislature, meaning 2 houses, just like the Parliament. Maximum strength given by the constitution 552. According to the Article 81, out of those 552 seats, 530 are to be represented by the states and 20 to be represented by the UTs. That brings us up to the total of 550. Rest of the two are nominated by the president. Candidates to be nominated will belong to Anglo Indian community, meaning people with mixed Indian and British ancestry or people of British descent born or residing in India. All the representatives except the nominated are elected by the people of India. Total seats occupied 543. But according to 104th Amendment Act, the reserved seats for Anglo Indians will be removed after 2024 elections. Why are we excluding those two? We'll find out later. However, these 543 members of the parliament are selected by the people of India through general elections. Before 2019, the state of Jammu and Kashmir was enjoying its special status under the Article 370, which got revoked in 2019. Earlier, they had their own legislative assembly and they held their own elections. But after the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act, the state was converted to a union territory. Now like the other UTs such as Delhi and Puducherry, Jammu and Kashmir may still have their own legislative assembly, but it will act as a new UT. Earlier, out of 543, 6 seats belonged to Jammu and Kashmir. Most likely, those 6 seats will be added to the 13 seats allotted to UTs. However, the strength will still be the same. So, why am I telling you this? Because since the act has been passed, the elected house is yet to be in place. And as I said earlier, the president is chosen by the members of the electoral college, that is, the parliament. Therefore, the members of the Jammu and Kashmir's legislative assembly cannot vote, which means the number of votes will be reduced, which reduces the value of the voters. What value? We'll know about it later. Why a certain number of say 543 is allocated. Number 1. On the basis of the population, Article 81 mandates that the ratio between states and the population for every state should be the same as far as possible. This is to ensure that every state is equally represented. For example, Andhra Pradesh has a population of 4 crore 95 lakh 77,103 people per seat, 19 lakh 83,084, giving the state 25 seats, while Himachal Pradesh has a population of 68,64,602 people per seat, 17,16,151. But if you take another state, say Arunachal Pradesh, the population is 13,83,727 and the people per seat are 6,91,964, which means these allocations are not absolutely fair. Second, delimitation. In simple words, it means defining the boundaries of the Lok Sabha and state assembly seats to represent changes from time to time. For example, the strength of Lok Sabha has not always been 543. In 1952, it was 497. Basically, it changes after a census. But delimitation was freezed in the year 1971 until 2001. Reason Article 81 states that population to seat ratio for every state should be same as far as possible. Because there was a population inequality between the states and it was predicted that over the years, with proper planning, we could bring the ratio to the same level. But we failed. 
therefore the delimitation process was further extended from 2001 to year 2026 but it's likely to be conducted after the census of 2031 but there is a problem in it as well india haven't conducted its census in 2021 and it is shifted to 2024 pandemic being the reason and since census is conducted after every 10 years it may be shifted to the year 2034 which may extend the delimitation remember there is a may in the sentence maximum strength given by the constitution 250 elected 233 nominated by the president 12 total seats occupied 245 think of rajya sabha as gas station which is always open meaning unlike lok sabha one third of the members retire every 2 years that is 245 divided by 3 is equal to 2 members so they have to conduct elections every 2 years for the vacant seats only the members of legislative assemblies of respective states and uts however the voting process is a bit different every state has been provided with exact number of candidates to be chosen Now since it's a democracy that state will have several political parties sitting in the state assembly voting for Rajya Sabha is done by the process known as single transferable vote on the principle of proportional representation that means every voter will be provided with a list of candidates and the voters have to mark their preferences such as number 1 2 3 candidates must reach a set amount of votes known as quota given by the formula total number of votes cast divided by number of seats to be elected plus 1 plus 1 suppose total number of votes casted is equals to 100 numbers of seats to be filled is equals to 9 so quota will be 100 divided by 9 plus 1 plus 1 equals to 11 a candidate must acquire 11 votes to win suppose a candidate got more than 11 votes then in single transferable vote system the extra votes will be transferred to the second choice of those extra votes similarly the candidate who got the least number of votes will be eliminated and his votes will be transferred according to the voters second best choice This process will continue until the required number of candidates are selected and the chosen candidate are sent to Rajya Sabha. Now that we know members of both the houses and the members of all the states and UT's legislative assemblies vote for the president. Election process proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote. To be nominated for the president one must have 50 electors that is who sign proposal for a candidate's name and 50 seconders who back those 50 electors on a candidate's name this was introduced to discourage non serious candidates now both the mps and mlas are assigned with a vote value for example the value of mps votes is 700 how is it calculated for that you have to understand how the value of mlas is assigned the value of mlas vote depend on the state's population and strength of legislative assembly for example population of andhra pradesh is 2 crore 78 lakhs 586 and the number of mlas is equals to 175 now this strength is according to the 1971 census remember why delimitation was stopped in the year 1971 coming back to calculate the value of each mlas vote just divide the population by number of mlas and multiply it by 1000 so for andhra pradesh 2 crore 78 lakhs 586 divided by 175 multiplied by 1000 which gives a value of 158.8 now round it off it will become 159 and that's the value of andhra pradesh 1 mla multiplied by the total number of mlas and you get the value of andhra pradesh which is equals to 27825 likewise the total value of all states and uts is equals to 543231 now this value comes after rounding of the figures such as 158.8 into 159 however the value of all states and uts given by the election commission of india is 543200 now to calculate the mps votes just divide the value of all mlas by the total number of mps excluding the value of nominated ones in both houses so for lok sabha 545 minus 2 is equals to 543 and for rajya sabha 245 minus 12 is equals to 233 together the total number of mps are 776 therefore 543200 divided by 776 gives the value of 700 which is the individual value of every mp earlier the value was 708 but after the jammu and kashmir assembly is declared non functioning therefore the value is reduced total number of members slash voters in the presidential college is 4809 each candidate cast his or her vote and in order to be selected they need to clear the quota remember we talked about quota earlier however the formula is a bit different which is total value of valid votes divided by 2 plus 1 so for example value of votes is equals to 2 lakh divided by 2 plus 1 is equals to 1001 the first person to clear the quota is to be elected the president 
If no one clears the quota, the person with the lowest votes is eliminated and his votes are distributed among other candidates according to his voter's second preference and the process continues until someone clears the quota and in the end we have the president of india you see how easy is the process and after being selected the president have all the powers to just listen to the prime minister maybe we can give him some actual powers but then who am i to say that and who's going to listen to me therefore goodbye